Hello and welcome to the Lobster's Voyage. In this video, I'll introduce you to the fate maps. If you're looking for the fate map of chick embryo or the fate maps of frog embryo, the link is provided in the description below. Do click on the link to watch the video. Basically, any organism, once it undergoes the process of fertilization, a zygote is formed and the zygote keeps on dividing continuously to form or to break into a respective units or the cells and each cell forms a organ in the coming days. So development of an embryo is an important event in the process of uh, organogenesis or in, in the process of evolution of an animal. So when a cell is dividing in the embryonic stage, what exactly is the fate of the cell? What is the possible organ that could be formed from each cell that is being divided in the zygote? Each cell can be formed, can, can, can develop into skin, any skin, skin, any cell can develop into heart, any cell can develop into uh, circulatory system, any skin can, any cell can develop into brain or any possible organ. So we will not have any clear idea about what exactly is the possible fate of each unit that is present in the developing embryo. When you focus on the embryo, at the earliest stages of development when the cells are least divided or when the number of divisions in the embryo can be counted for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 when you look at this countable number of divisions uh, you, you can actually have an idea like this could be this could form the possible organ but once the division progresses or once the, the, the division proceeds the number of cells divided increases and at one point of time they become uncountable therefore the organ that could be possible from each cell in the developing embryo cannot be traced so what exactly would happen to the fate of each unit in the developing embryo so we will have to understand the concept of fate map so we need to if we need to understand the concept of fate of each unit in the developing embryo we need to get introduced to a technique that enables us to understand the fate of each cell in the developing embryo if the embryo is partially colored the possible movement of the cells could be tracked but what happens if the embryo is not colored sometimes when you take the classic example of the frog egg that is deposited in the water it is almost invisible to the water color it almost gets completely uh, invisible when it is in the water medium so if you want to understand the concept of the cell division or the fate of each cell in the in, in the embryo it's almost impossible so we will have to understand a technique to map the fate of each unit in the embryo and that technique is called as fate mapping technique so if you want to look at the basic definition of the fate mapping basically it is a process where the embryo the developing embryo is coated with dyes or colors which do not hamper the developmental pattern of the embryo but that colors imparted to each unit possibly tracks the movement of the cells that is the cellular movement or the morphogenetic movement of each unit in the zygote could be possibly tracked and this technique is called as fate mapping technique i repeat again fate mapping is a technique that is done on the embryo where the embryo is coated with colors or dyes that do not hamper the development of the embryo but in turn helps us to track the movement of the cells so when the embryo is colored obviously color could be easily uh, visualized from a person's eye or from a microscopic uh, use or the microscope can be used to mark the cellular movement and the possible formation of the organs and organ systems in the embryo could be easily tracked this was an important discovery or important invention to understand all possible morphogenetic movements in the uh, uh, embryo. So when you look at the concept of fate map, when you look at the concept of fate map, fate map is a diagrammatic representation of the embryo where the possible areas that give rise to specific organs could easily be marked or graphically represented. So 
fate map is a graphical representation or diagrammatic representation which will enable us to see the regions in the embryo that could possibly give rise to various organs in the coming days and this fate map is not a constant procedure it keeps on changing like the fate map at this stage could possibly give us only uh, nine possible regions and fate map at this stage enables us to give further more number of stages and the fate map at this point would enable us to understand the maximum concept the fate map keeps on changing over period and period so to understand the development of an organism at complete level we will have to do series of fate maps on the basis of time duration of the embryonic development and once when you do the series of fate map you will be able to construct the entire fate map that gives you the regions the prospective organ forming regions in the embryo the possible way of fate map construction include three basic mechanism which are physical observation use of technology or use of camera and third one most important one use of color or type basically physical observation of a live embryo which is which is basically done by an individual who isolates the embryo and places it under the microscope and he constantly observes uh, about the developmental patterns in the uh, developing embryo basically the embryo might divide into two number of cells four number of cells six number of cells so he manually have to observe it count it and make it a note which is most difficult so observation of live embryo can be done when there are few number of cells when the number of cells in exceeds or when they crosses the countable mark this techniques become very 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 difficult second technique the possible second technique for the observation of the fate map or the construction of the fate map is by the use of camera so to a microscope some people fit in camera and they keep it under the time lapse sequence mode where the development or the division of the embryo is recorded under digital camera and the time lapse sequence can be used to see the way of division see this is one of the most advanced or one of the most developed technique wherein we can mark the developmental pattern developmental types number of cells type and movement of the cells can easily be tracked again if it is transparent if the embryo is transparent and that could possibly not give a proper result so we will not be able to track the movement of the cells if the uh, if the uh, embryo that is being tracked is transparent in nature so the third or the most important technique under the uh, under the fate map construction where the large embryo are mapped with specific labels that is this labeling is done by the aid of dyes or stains so the selected number of cells uh, they are dyed or they are stained and these staining gives us color and this possible color could be easily tracked with the help of time lapse mode or with the help of camera or with the help of microscope so this particular technique that is a use of dye or the stain for the process of fate mapping is an important step in construction of any fate maps the labeling method in the process of fate map construction includes two major divisions which include natural method of labeling and the artificial method of labeling in the natural method of labeling basically the developing embryo has got some of the natural colors along so we need not add any artificial colors into it so there there is a there is a group of naturally occurring colors with, within the developing embryo and these different colors they exist together to focus at and taking the classic example of an acidia in the case of tunicates we get to find four different colors in the embryo that is we will find clear or the transparent form of cytoplasm dark gray color yolk and light gray color albumin solution and you will also find yellow color region and this possible four colors would possibly become or when the fate map is constructed this clear cytoplasm was developing into ectoderm the outer covering of the organism and the dark gray color yolk that was forming the endoderm the possible endodermis and the region uh, 
uh, these endodermis the, it further gave rise to different organs in the in the next stage and the light gray color albumin solution that enabled the formation or the evolution of the notochord and the neural plate the, the major spinal cord and the neural plate was originating from the light gray color solution and the yellow color solution gave rise to the mesoderm so when the uh, organisms like ascidian tunicates when they are naturally labeled with the pre-existing natural colors the fate map showed four major colors and these colors gave distinct regions in the later stages of the development and the next major method is artificial method and this is done with the use of artificial colors which are injected into the developing embryo when the artificial methods are applied for the fate mapping technique one thing has to be taken care that the use of chemicals or use of other substances should not hamper the development of the embryo so while choosing the colors or the dyes or the other substances that are included in the artificial uh, staining technique or artificial fate map construction technique should not hamper the development of the embryo so on, on on the basis of the substance that is chosen for the usage on the embryo this artificial method of fate map construction or artificial labeling method includes six different steps one of which being vital dyes, second one being the histochemical stains, third one being the use of carbon particles, the fourth one being the usage of the radioactive markers, fourth one, fifth one is the fluorescent dye usage and the sixth one, the most important one and that induces permanent change in the embryo that is the usage of genetic markers. Beginning from the first, vital dyes, use of vital dyes, this method was developed by a scientist named Vogt in the year 1925. Ever since that, this technique has become most important and most predominant technique in doing almost all the fate maps of the developing embryo. The vital dye method uses four natural stains or four natural colors that is Nile blue, natural or the neutral red and Bismarck brown and the Janus green stain. So these four colors they are mixed in the agar medium and this mixed agar medium is coated on the embryo after some time when this agar is uh, fixed or mounted onto the embryo the colors green brown red and blue they are moved into the embryo and that imparts stain or dyes in the embryo so uh, this is a most most important technique and major disadvantage of this technique is that as the as and when the cell division proceeds as and when the division of the cells in the zygote uh, increases the color intensity of all these four gradually reduces as the de division progresses the color intensity of the developing uh, embryo gradually reduces the second major technique is the histochemical stain uh, this histochemical stain is again the use of various colors but with the inclusion of specific enzymes like horse radish peroxidase it is also called as HRP enzyme and this histochemical staining technique this is done by the process where the uh, dye is added with the enzyme and this dye is poured onto the embryo and the embryo absorbs various stains and this stains they differ between protein lipid and the carbohydrate and uh, this dyes they impart color to the developing embryo and the color marking can easily be done the face map, face map construction is possible with the histochemical stain as well and same disadvantage of use by the usage of the histochemical stain that is as and when the development of the embryo proceeds the color intensity of the stains used gradually reduces the third major technique is the usage of the carbon particles which was done for the first time by a scientist known as Pratt in the year 1946 and he conducted experiment on the chick embryo where he induced some of the carbon particles like C13 it was induced into the egg of the embryo uh, in the into the egg and he started tracking the fate maps of the chick again it is a important technique whereas the concentration of the uh, concentration of the carbon particle gradually reduces as and when the chick embryo divides or the uh, uh, the process of the dermal layer 
initiates. So this is again a major technique in the artificial method of the fate map construction. The fourth major one, it, uh, a pretty dangerous one when compared to all other techniques that is the radioactive marking especially by the use of a radioactive substance called as thymidine. This radioactivity could possibly induce, induce mutations in case of the embryo and also it can induce some of the dangerous effects on the person who is inducing it. Therefore, this technique is not that preferred while constructing the artificial methods yet to understand the genetic composition or to understand the genetic movement in the embryo, this radioactive markers are, ready, uh, uh, are used where the radioactive substances is injected into the developing embryo and the activity of the radioactive substance is tracked and the major radioactive element that is used in the radioactive marker is thymidine. The fifth one is a fluorescent dye. As we all know, fluorescents create a kind of illumination or a kind of reflection. The same fluorescent dyes uh, that illuminate or they which shine out the light, they are injected into the embryo through the micro injection technique and fluorescent microscopes are used to, to track the possible morphogenetic movements in the developing embryo. The last one is a genetic marker. So all these things, all other five techniques, they fade away as the uh, process of uh, development increases or as the process of development prolongs, the color intensity of all these substances gradually reduces. Whereas the genetic marker, it's a unique way of constructing the fate maps where the, uh, where genetically modif the substance that can genetically modif modify is induced into the embryonic stage and that permanently modifies the genetic composition of the embryo and this becomes uh, integral part of that particular cell and the genetic marker has got a uh, importance or it has got significance where it will not affect the neighboring cells if for example if you want to understand the genetic level of development of a particular cell where you do the genetic marking, genetic fate mapping is done on a specific cell and the genetic form of evolution can easily be tracked. So these are the various types or these are the various forms through which the fate mapping process can easily be done. The fate mapping is an important technique to understand the developmental pattern in the developing embryo. Also, it is most most significant one just because it enables us to track the movement of the cells. The cells that are present in the upper surface can move to the lower surface. The cells that are existing in the lower surface can move to the circumference or the periphery of the developing embryo. So this possible movement in the cells can easily be tracked with the help of various dyes under the artificial method. And if you, if you want to focus on the significance or the importance of the fate maps, fate maps are the most most important tools whenever we are doing any embryological studies. studies. That is, when we are carrying out any experimentation on the embryo, developing embryo, maybe fish embryo, maybe chick embryo, maybe frog embryo, this particular technique plays significant role because it will enable us to understand the way the cells are dividing, the way the cells are moving. Second thing, second major significance of the fate maps, it allows us to track the cell lineage. That means, which cell is forming what organ? which cell is uh, evolving into what organ system. So that possible tracking is only possible with the application of the fate map. And the third significance of the fate map is, a, is that this fate map technique will allow us to see the movement that is happening in the egg uh, or the developing embryo. So the cells might migrate from one region to another region in a specific pattern. So that morphogenetic movement can easily be understood with the application of the fate map. Dear uh, listeners, I hope you, you uh, got, the, got sufficient knowledge from this video. If yes, kindly like, share and also spread the knowledge. See you again. Cheers.